Costa Rica is a beautiful country in Central America with stunning mountain views in its center, while along the coast you can find amazing views like this one from the region known as Guanacaste, which has rare dry rainforests. There are several quaint seaside surf towns like Jaco that cater to high stakes gamblers all the way to surf bums. In the interior, there are seven active volcanoes, including Arenal and Poas. Costa Rica also has a wealth of beautiful beaches, like this one at Manuel Antonio National Park on the Pacific side. There are also a multitude of waterfalls all over the country, such as this one near Volcano Arenal. In today's episode of My Backyard, we will look at some of the most beautiful birds in Costa Rica. Keel Build Toucan is a frequent visitor to my backyard here in Costa Rica. We see these birds almost every day, sometimes one or two, sometimes flocks of 10 or 12. I was very shocked when I first moved here and heard something that sounded like a frog, but it turned out it was a toucan. Just listen to this guy. The keel billed toucan is perhaps one of the most recognizable birds in Costa Rica. Made famous in the United States by Toucan Sam of Fruit Loops fame, we all recognize this unique bird. The keel billed toucan can grow to almost two feet long, with around a third of that being their bill. The bill looks cumbersome, especially in flight, but it's really a very light but very durable structure of spongy bone. Recently, an injured toucan here in Costa Rica had his bill replaced by a 3D printed replacement. An adult toucan can weigh up to a pound and a half, but less than an ounce of that is the bill, although the bill makes up one third of the overall length of the bird. Everyone is familiar with the toucan's stunning bill and his beautiful black and yellow plumage. However, many people don't realize the feathers around the rear of the toucan are a beautiful red. The national bird of Belize, the toucan has a colorful bill and plumage which are religiously maintained with daily grooming that seems to consume a large amount of the toucan's time. The toucan is omnivorous in its diet, eating fruits, nuts, seeds, as well as lizards, insects, eggs, and even the young of other birds. The bill is a great tool as it allows for this wide ranging diet. Toucan grooming takes up much of their day. It seems like every time I see one of these birds, they're grooming or singing. Very rarely do I see them actually eating. Toucans live and nest in hollow trees, many times in an old woodpecker hole. Toucans are strange in that both the male and the female will share responsibility for incubating the eggs and feeding the young. The eggs hatch after two or three weeks and the young will stay in the nest for at least two months before they are ready to fly. The most dangerous time for toucan chicks is in the first three weeks while their eyes remain closed and they are totally blind. Toucans are very social birds and are rarely seen alone. Around our home, when you see one, you can bet there is at least one other nearby and the family of between 6 and 12 birds are somewhere in the local vicinity. Even though these birds live near my home and live around many people, they are still very timid and they spook very easily. Costa Rica is a tropical country with a rainy season lasting from April through the end of November. However, even with the heavy rains, the wildlife, especially the toucans, don't seem to mind in the least.
Next on our tour of beautiful birds in Costa Rica is the blue-throated toucanet. This bird is a close relative of the keel-billed toucan, but with much more colorful plumage. These birds are much smaller, being perhaps half the size of the keel-billed toucan. These have recently been classified as a different species than the emerald toucanet, but many researchers think they are in fact the same species with slight variations in color in the Costa Rica and Panama regions. The blue-throated toucanet has a wide variety in its diet. Around my home, I have seen them eat seeds, fruits, insects, as well as the eggs, and once even the hatchling of another bird. Much like the keel-billed toucan, the blue-throated toucanet has a bill specially designed for the wide variety of food that he can consume. They prefer to live in mountain forests at altitudes from 2,000 to 7,500 feet. These birds mostly nest in old woodpecker holes laying two to four eggs. The young are both blind and totally naked when born, but within a month and a half, they are usually ready to leave the nest for the tropical rainforests. It can be very difficult spotting the blue-throated toucanet in the forest thanks to their green plumage, which blends in perfectly with the rainforest around them. Thankfully, they don't seem to be able to sit still for very long and their movement gives them away as they search the rainforest for food. They also don't seem to spend near as much time grooming themselves like the kill-billed toucans do. I have never seen one of these birds do anything more than rudimentary grooming. The blue-throated toucanet is a much more solitary and certainly much quieter bird than their keel-billed cousins. I usually see these in pairs with a male and female. They look very similar, but the female is a bit smaller. I've never seen these in flocks or large family groups like their larger relatives. They are also much quieter, and their song is not much more than a simple peep In my backyard, we see the blue-throated toucan infrequently. They seem to come around two or three times a month in search of food. This tells me they have a wide range and do as many birds as in Costa Rica do, move from one part of the rainforest to another as fruits and nuts ripen. These birds are also very shy and do not allow people to come close. You just have to be waiting in the right place at the right time to get good shots of these shy beauties. The next beautiful bird of Costa Rica is the Baltimore Oriole. These birds live mainly in the north and east coast of the United States, but migrate to Mexico and as far south as Colombia during the winter. We only see these in late November through late January. However, they make a great addition to the rainforest as another beautiful and colorful bird that comes to my backyard. In Costa Rica, I have seen Baltimore Orioles eating mainly insects, fruits, and nuts but also enjoy nectar. They will even feed from hummingbird feeders. Mainly, I see them foraging in trees, looking under loose bark for any insects that may lie underneath. The Baltimore Oriole is supposedly a solitary bird outside its mating season, but the ones that are visiting my property this winter are a pair, one male and one female. The male has a much brighter orange belly and is striking black, while the female's colors are much more muted. However, when I see one, I usually see the other nearby. Because of their bright colors and tendency to perch high up in trees, the Baltimore Oriole is a prey animal for many kinds of hawks and falcons. Just yesterday, 
I saw a short-tailed hawk make a dive for one. However, the oriole was observant and just hopped down into the deeper parts of the tree. Not long after, he was right back to the very top, testing his luck. These birds do tend to live for a long time. The record for a wild bird is almost 12 years, with captive birds living up to 14 years. Baltimore Orioles don't breed in Costa Rica, preferring to wait until they return to their summer habitat in the United States. The female builds a hanging nest, much like another bird we will see later in this documentary, the Montezuma or Pendula. They usually lay three to seven eggs, with four to five being the average. The young hatch after about two weeks and don't need long to become independent and leave the nest. The Baltimore Oriole is a noted songbird, but I have yet to hear them sing here in Costa Rica. I don't know if that is something they don't do here for some reason, or I just haven't been lucky enough to hear one yet. However, with the number of birds of prey I see daily, I can totally understand if they are just being quiet. The next bird on our list is the laughing falcon. This bird is also called a snake hawk, but is in reality a member of the falcon family that is a specialized snake hunter. Its ample plumage protects it from any poisonous strikes that its prey may try and land. The bird usually attacks from behind the snake, grasping it near the head before decapitating the snake with its razor sharp beak. It can also feed on lizards and small mammals, but almost never takes other birds as many falcon species do. The laugh, or the call of the laughing falcon, is an amazing and unique call that gives these birds their name. I hear them almost daily, but never close by, and I've never had the chance to get one on video as it sings. I do, however, have multiple recordings of their beautiful song, such as this one. From my backyard, I see the laughing falcon quite often. They seem to prefer to observe from perched vantage points as they search for prey. I have seen them sit for hours, moving nothing but their heads as they view their domain. However, they do aerial searches as well and are easy to distinguish from other birds of prey by the beautiful white underbelly. The laughing falcon has a three-foot wingspan. There is very little difference between the males and the females in coloration. However, the female usually weighs from a quarter to a half pound more than the male. There is also very little difference in the plumage between an immature bird and a mature bird. The laughing falcon can be found from Mexico on south through Central America and in vast areas of South America. The laughing falcon is very similar in size to a keel-billed toucan. Both grow to almost two feet in length and weigh in at around a pound and a half fully grown. There is a difference of opinion among scientists with some claiming that the laughing falcon can lay up to two eggs, while other scientists' opinion they can only lay one egg at a time. The fledgling leaves the nest about two months after hatching. Our next beautiful bird of Costa Rica is the masked titaira. I call these the snow white of Costa Rican birds, although only the male of the species is pure white with a black and red face mask. The females are a more grayish color. In my backyard, I see these almost every day. We have a mated pair that lives very close by. 
They were looking at an old woodpecker hole near my driveway as a new home last spring, but apparently they chose elsewhere. The mast titira lives from Mexico south through Central America and into South America, where its range is mostly in the Amazon basin. This is concerning as major parts of its habitat are under threat from deforestation. These birds feed mainly on insects and fruits, but they can eat small animals like lizards as well. They are so adept at catching insects on the wing, they used to be listed as a species of flycatcher. The mass titira nests mainly in old woodpecker holes, but will also build nests in the top of dead palm trees. The female builds the nest from dry leaves, and she alone will sit on the eggs. Once hatched, both parents will contribute to the feeding and raising of the young. The chicks will be ready to leave the nest about three weeks after hatching. Next, we present the Montezuma oropendola. Despite being named after Montezuma, these birds do not inhabit any of the Aztec emperor's old territories. They live from southern Mexico through Costa Rica. What you see in this clip is the bowing display, which is used by dominant males to win over females. Both males and females have similar coloration. However, the female is usually about half the size of the male. The Montezuma or Pendula is a colony breeder. They build multiple woven nests that hang from trees. There are usually 20 or more nests in a colony, but there have been cases where over 150 nests in a colony have been documented. The dominant male then breeds with his females after impressing them with its bowing display. The female will then lay two eggs which hatch in around two weeks. The young are ready to leave the nest after about a month. Unfortunately, we have no nests in my backyard, but here are two photos of nests I've seen from around the country. Oral pendulas are very social birds and live in large groups year round. In my backyard, I've seen over 30 at one time. They're beautiful to look at and the male's bowing display is quite interesting but having so many birds making so much noise at once can get on the nerves. The biggest problem I have is they love to make a lot of noise at the break of day, which in Costa Rica is about 5 a.m. In this clip, you can see the size difference between the male in the foreground and his female harem in the background. Montezuma or Pendulous don't seem to do much grooming usually during or after a rain shower to dry their feathers. I have seen them perched in trees with wings wide open, much like vultures do after rain. But for the most part, grooming seems to be an afterthought to them. You can also see just how sharp a point their bills make. This helps in getting into fruit as they insert the sharp bill then open the mouth to break open the fruit. Well, pendulas are very common throughout most of Costa Rica. They live on a wide-ranging diet that can include fruits like bananas, large and small insects, small animals like lizards, nectar, and even the leaves and flowers from some trees. During breeding season, the flocks stay close to their nesting sites, but at other times of year, the flock moves freely over a very large range. These flocks can include up to 50 individuals. To end part one, we present the great Kiskadee. 
These brightly colored birds are loud but beautiful, and some of the most frequent visitors to my backyard, considering they have a nest in the front yard. The great Kiskadee and his mate are very territorial and seem to have no fear. The male also does this very interesting dance. I don't know if he was just happy, but it seemed to me he was trying to attract a mate. The great Kiskadee is omnivorous, eating small animals, fruits, and will even dive for small fish and tadpoles in addition to their main diet of insects. The great Kiskadee is a proficient flycatcher, and we see their aerial acrobatics often. They like to perch in the tops of trees and watch for any insect flying near the tree or in the tree. They then swoop out and catch dinner. I have seen them fly 40 meters out to catch an insect. The great Kiskadee has a shrill call we hear in my backyard daily. The birds are very social, with several different individuals living nearby. Groups are known to hunt together, so seeing them flying around together is not uncommon. When termites hatch and begin to fly around in the thousands, I see at least 10 individuals hunting the easy and plentiful prey from a dead tree on the edge of my backyard. The great Kiskadee lives from South Texas through Central America and into South America where they populate the majority of the continent east of the Andes Mountains. They build a ball-shaped circular nest of twigs with an opening in the side that just doesn't appear large enough to allow them to enter. They have used the nest in our front yard for several years now and are very protective of that area. I have seen them fight with different kinds of birds, even including parrots, defending the nest territory. I have even seen them try and chase off white-faced monkeys and brown jays twice their size. The female will lay two to three eggs and is the only one that will incubate them, although the male does help in feeding the young. Beautiful sunsets end each day in Costa Rica and without fail are incredibly beautiful. I close this episode with one of my most beautiful sunsets and hope to see each and every one of you back to enjoy more stunning Costa Rican nature. I hope you have enjoyed part one of the beautiful birds of Costa Rica. Part two and perhaps even part three are already in the works. These will feature parrots, tangiers, euphonia, hawks, the Costa Rican version of a wild turkey, and even a beautiful mot mot. Be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel to assure you won't miss any of our upcoming productions.